Hello, my name is Anibal. I would like to follow to my Instagram page that is on Korak and you will see a lot of medical content and information that you need. Please subscribe to this channel and you will receive a lot of new videos related to this content. The skin is the largest organ of the body, accounting for about 15% of the total amount of body weight. It performs many vital functions, including protection against external physical, chemical, and biologic assailant, as well as preventing of excess water loss from the body and a role in thermal regulation. The integumentary system is formed by the skin and its derivate structures. The skin is composed of three layers, the epidermis, the dermis, and the subcutaneous tissue. The outermost level, the epidermis, consists of a specific constellation of cells known as keratinocytes, which function to synthesize keratin, a long tree-like protein with a protective role. The stratum corneum is the top layer of the epidermis. This is the layer of the epidermis that you see in the stratum corneum. Keratinocytes become corneocytes. Corneocytes are strong, dead keratinocytes and they protect you from harm, including abrasions, light, heat, and pathogens. This layer also consists of fats that keep water from easily entering or leaving your body. The next stratum is the stratum lucidum. Between the stratum granulosum and the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum is a thin, transparent layer of keratinocytes that are becoming less round and have a flatter shape. The stratum granulosum, between the stratum spinosum layer and the stratum lucidum layer, keratinocytes have granules within them and in this layer they are visible under a microscope. The stratum spinosum, between the stratum basal layer and the stratum granulosum layer, this layer mostly consists of keratinocytes held together by sticky proteins called desmosomes. And the final stratum is the stratum basal. It's the deepest layer of the epidermis. New skin cells develop in this layer and it also contains the keratinocyte stem cells, which produce protein keratin. Keratin helps from, to form hair, nails, and your skin outer layer, which protect you from the harsh environment, and it also contains melanocytes, which are responsible for producing melanin, which provides the pigment of your epidermis. And in this case, you are watching a sebaceous gland is a microscope exocrine gland in the skin that opens into a hair follicle to secrete an oily or waxy matter called sebum, which lubricates the hair and the skin of mammals. The next one is the dermis. The dermis consists of two layers, the, re the reticular dermis the reticular layer is the bottom layer of your dermis. It's thick and it contains blood vessels, glands, hair follicles, lymphatic nerves, and fat cells, a net-like structure of elastin fibers and collagen fibers surrounds the reticular dermis. These fibers support your skin's overall structure as well as allow it to move and stretch. The next one is the papillary dermis. The papillary layer is the top layer of your dermis. It's much thinner than the reticular dermis and it consists of collagen fibers, fibrous cells, fat cells, blood vessels, capillary loops, nerve fibers, touch receptor like the Meissner, and cells that fight bacteria, phagocytes. The papillary dermis extends to the basement layer of the epidermis layer. They form a strong bone that connects like interlocking fingers. 
Also, there are two types of corpuscles that are the most numerous types of mechanosensory corpuscles in the human palm, that are the Pacinian and Meissner corpuscles. The Pacinian corpuscles detect high frequency vibrations and the Meissner are tuned to lower frequencies. Both types are innervated by myelinated mechanosensors that arise from somatosensory ganglia. And the fi final layer is the hypodermis that has many functions, including connection. The hypodermis connects your dermis layer to your muscles and bone. The protecting your body, the hypodermis allows your skin to move smoothly over the tissues and muscles underneath it. Without hypodermis, your skin would develop against those tissues and muscles. The storing energy the hypodermis produces fat cells, adipocytes, which store energy. The hypodermis layer includes adipocyte tissue. The adipocyte tissue is a fatty tissue that consists mostly of adipocytes blood vessels. Blood vessels include capillary and veins and arteries. They circulate blood through your body and help deliver oxygen to vital organs. Also, there are fibroblasts that are a type of cells in your connective tissue. They release collagen which helps make up your connective tissue. There are also lymphatic vessels. The lymphatic vessels are the network of capillaries, micro vessels, and large network of tubes located through your body and transport waste products away from tissues. There are also nerves that sense electrical signals um, from other cells, gland and muscles all over your body. They receive information from the world around and then interpret the information and control your response. The macrophages are a type of white blood cells. They attack and destroy uh, any dangerous organism or cell inside your body. A sweet glands. Uh, sweet glands keep your body temperature around 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit by releasing the sweat when you are in a warm environment or working out. What is the hypodermis responsible for? The hypodermis thickness differs across your body, fatty tissue, and there are a higher amount of testosterone in your body. Your hypodermis is thickness in your abdomen arms, lower back, and shoulders.